Hey everybody, it's Alex from Old Man Playing Video Games Badly, which is basically just Old Man Badly these days. We're not doing video games today. Today we're doing The Great GPU Conspiracy. Old Man Playing Video Games Badly. <laughs> Alrighty. First of all, I want to say welcome. Second of all, the subject of our video today is Jay from Jay's Two Cents. Hi, Jay. How you doing? Um, big thumbs for Jay. He's a guy who likes uh, fast computers and fast cars. So you got his channel, Jay's Two Cents, and his car channel, Jay's Two Cars. I'm assuming there may be Jay's Two Lunches. I don't know. <laughs> Could be. I don't know. I don't look. Anyway, um, we're talking uh, about Jay's video, which was called The Great GPU Conspiracy. Um, and where he goes out and attacks some of the um, obvious conspiracy theories about GPU shortage, chip shortage. All the crap that's going on right now. And he's good because he, he goes he goes wide with this. So he not only looks at GPU shortage, but he goes all the way up. And we're even going to talk about cars. Right? Jay's two cars, Jay's two cents, Jay's two GPUs, I guess. So let's uh, let's see uh, what he had to say to start with. Jay? We are going to talk about uh, the, con the conspiracies surrounding GPUs. These brands like NVIDIA and AMD, they hate you. They love miners and they hate you. Oh, I, I love that start. I mean, Jay's got a great editor. Um, maybe he does it himself. I don't know. Um, for those who wonder, by the way, I don't have a great editor. I'm a really good editor, actually, but I don't have an editing setup right now. I do all this on OBS. One take. So, you know, apologize for the eye scratching and stuff like that. It's one take. You get me. Okay. So... Where Jay starts with is the idea that um, NVIDIA sold, made a whole bunch of money selling video cards to miners. The first conspiracy theory was that NVIDIA sold $175 million worth of Ampere graphics cards directly to cryptocurrency miners, whether it be in China. I think China was the alleged, but I, I digress. I don't know where that actually took place. Um, the most credible... And I say the word credible extremely loosely here. The most credible site that even reported on this was WCCF Tech. And that's because WCCF Tech is a tech tabloid. They oh, yeah. he's. Uh, I, I sort of stopped it there because he's sort of trashing them. <laughs> Perhaps rightly so. I don't know. I don't read it. So I sort of, uh, I'll call it for what it's worth. Um, so the what he says is the conspiracy and not true is that nvidia sold 150 million dollars worth of graphics cards to miners in china okay um and it's one of those things where the story was sort of reported but it all kind of as he says it all kind of traces back to this one wcc story which initially was true however this came out from Coindesk, uh, a guy by the name of Zach Voel, Vol? Voel, I guess. Anyway, this is from February, which is right after the NVIDIA earnings call. NVIDIA says Ethereum mining activity contributed very little to its Q4 2020 revenue. Now, very little. I wish my very little in life matched NVIDIA's very little because their very little is, it's, <laughs> wow. Although it lacks the ability to actually track or quantify the end use of its graphics processing units, NVIDIA CFO Colette Kress says the company estimates that between, now you're paying attention here, between 100 million and 300 million, a relatively small portion, of Q4 revenue came from Ethereum miners buying GPUs to use their mining equipment. So now, Q4 2020 would be the time when the new cards was released. So in that time, NVIDIA sold between 100 million and 300 million graphics cards, uh, million dollars worth of graphics cards to miners 
in their their estimation, which at seven hundred and fifty dollars per card, being generous on price, uh, means that they ship give or take one hundred and fifty thousand graphics cards to miners in a quarter in three months. And since then, that's February. So we have March, April, and we're now in May. So we're in the next quarter. Um, they should be reporting the next quarter, I guess, next week, end of next week. Um, 12 days, sorry, 12 days from now, around. Uh, maybe a little bit more, a little less. I don't follow their, their exact dates, so don't take me as a reference for that. Uh, and in that quarter, they probably would have sold about that many again give or take. So you're talking upwards to 300,000 graphics cards. And then you add in the idea that AMD has also been selling graphics cards and miners have been buying their cards. Say AMD sold well, 50,000 cards. Um, okay, so now you've got two quarters of AMD cards, two quarters of NVIDIA cards. Oh, you've got 400,000 plus graphics cards in the hands of miners. Now, I don't know about you, but if you put 400,000 graphics cards into the marketplace today, if you drop 400,000 graphics card into the new egg shuffle tonight, I guarantee you they wouldn't be able to find enough buyers. It would take a few days at least. Um, it might not completely satisfy the market, but it would certainly um, change things. So while Jay believes it's a rumor or a conspiracy. The reality is NVIDIA sold a lot of graphics cards to miners. Uh, and more on that in a minute. When I get to the summary, we're going to talk a little bit about that because there's, there's, I got another video coming about this, but we'll go from there. The next one that Jay went to is the car one. Before to shut down um, one of its major uh, facilities, obviously for the F-150, uh, Chevy has shut down four facilities now stopped manufacturing on quite a few models. And Nissan has also now, I think, announced that there's five models that they stopped production on because of the same reason. They cannot get computers. So... Yep, and it's the truth. Uh, there's a picture out there of Kentucky Speedway where next to, not far from where the F-150s are built, and the F-250s, etc., from Ford. All their high-dollar pickup trucks, their best-selling model uh, for, for the last... 30 years or whatever. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, and there's, they've got thousands of the things lined up. They've been built without computers because they don't have computers to put in them. But the thing is, blaming the chip shortage on their lack of computers only tells half the story because the other half of the story is this part. And this is from CNN Business, a reputable source. Well, depends how reputable you think CNN is, but there you go. Um... You got to go down a couple a little bit here. They, they cut down the plants, cut down the plants, blah, blah, blah. Automakers cut back orders for computer chips early last year when the pandemic slammed the brakes on auto sales and production because of temporary plant closings. When car sales bounced back sooner than expected, it left the industry struggling with a chip shortage. That was exasperated or subjugated. <laughs> by increased demand for laptops during the stay-at-home area and the electronic and computer industry snapping up excess supply of chips, said Christian Joseph, Vice President of Search for Auto Research in Michigan Think Tank. So what actually happened here is this. Ford and Chevy and Nissan and all these car companies, pandemic hit, sales went, production went, they closed their plants. What they did was basically they took themselves out of line with the fabs and they said basically we don't need ford might have ordered a, a million engine computers whatever they went oh no 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 we don't need a million engine computers uh we only need two hundred thousand. just just make two hundred thousand. that'll be good we'll be fine and then what's happened is demand for new cars has actually shot way up but by this time you know Ford's not in line anymore. Basically, you picture the lineup. Ford Ford buggered off and went to the bathroom and went and had a three-martini lunch. They're not in line anymore. They came back, and there's a little big lineup for chips. And they're at the back of the line. They might be able to buy their way. They might be able to buy cuts somewhere along the line. But generally, 
you know, they're not going to be first in line to get their bits and pieces. So they have a chip shortage and there is a global chip shortage and we know that. But there's a why, and we'll get to that in a second. So what happens is basically, yeah, Ford and GM and, and Nissan, all these companies are, are having to cut back production because they don't have computers to put in their cars. But the reality is they did it to themselves because they overestimated, they overestimated how long the pandemic would last and how few cars that they would sell in fiscal 2021 in the model year 2021. So now they're stuck in a situation where they want to build more cars than they can, but the lineup's too long and they can't do it. Now, I got into a discussion with um, a guy over at a webpage called Tech Tech Potato. And that gentleman's name is Dr. Ian Cutris. He's a doctor. Okay, so we'll take him as a relatively informed source. Um, he's uh, definitely, uh, he knows a lot about chips, put it that way. And I asked him a question because he was talking about shortages. And I mentioned that I did a video recently about how chip shortages seem to be a little bit odd. It would appear that the real issue is that the yield may not be as good as you might think link to the video up there. You see the video link on the screen, but I'll put a, a link up over there. Okay. So you guys go check the video out if you want. He said, very important now, substrate availability is way too low is a big factor. I'm speaking with the main players regularly about it. Substrates are the, the basic layer, the discs on which the chips are built. The, uh, the basic building block of the chip. Okay. They're not able to, Apparently there's not enough of it. And I goes, Ooh, I sort of said, does not compute. All of the reports are that the fabs are running hundred percent way past the normal 80% or so. Now if the substrate was in short supply. They would be running at lower production levels. Instead, they were running flat out. And he says, check the financial calls Q and a going back a couple of quarters An ABF factory shut down. But what do I know? Um, the guy's knowledgeable. He's a little bit of a in his way off. So, um, and I said, basically that this is getting pushed through Linus tech tips and such, uh, but it doesn't seem to match. Um, and we'll get, you know, like I said, this is kind of the ongoing issue I have, which is that there appears to be, um, for all intents and purposes, um, hi, it's me, um, th for all intents and purposes, Everybody is saying the fabs are running way more than they were before and that we're generating all these things. We know that the car companies got out of line and turned back their production schedule or their, their production space. And I'm sure that all the fab companies took that stuff and, and ran with it and went, Hey, great. Let's uh, sell it to somebody else. Cause oh, you guys need GPUs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they don't have the substrate material to work with, they can't make the chips. My initial video. I suggested that perhaps the issue has to do with yield, which is how many good chips you get every time you, you run one of these, these discs through and you make chips on it and there's, I don't know, a thousand chips on it, whatever, how many of them are actually good and how many of them you have to trash because the process isn't perfect. Right. Um, and I was thinking that perhaps the process isn't that good and they're having to trash a lot and they don't have as many parts, even though the fabs are running a lot, they're having a hard time doing it. Now, we may also have a situation where the fabs are running harder, but the seven nanometer process that these things are being built on perhaps is a little bit slower, takes a little bit longer, whatever, and they're not producing as many chips. But a substrate shortage would kind of explain a lot of it because it would mean the fabs themselves can't even produce even if they wanted to. And, you know, you go from there. So I think that um, all I really want to say at the end of the day was um, Jay is correct to a certain extent, but you have to remember that the chip shortage is a little bit more complicated than we think. There's a lot of moving parts in the process of making chips from uh, getting the the pure sand silica whatever out of the ground to making the the substrates and and all that stuff and getting the substrates into the factories and having the factory actually run and produce it and then taking what's produced and turning them into finished chips because you got to remember most of the um 
most of the companies now, especially when you talk CPUs, are using chiplet design. So they're they're building multiple little chips and they're reassembling them later into a final product. Um, so you got a bunch of steps and you got a bunch of stuff going on and a bunch of moving parts. And I think what's happened is somewhere down the line, go back that way. Yes, demand is up. I agree. Demand is up 30, 40, 50, 60%. Bing. But there's a lot of other stuff going on in the world that's cutting back on actual chip production and slowing us down and factories closing. And I guess uh, this week, uh, Taiwan's having a bit of a run on COVID and potentially there may be another slowdown in making chips. Now, the other part is, and, and this is a, a whole other video's worth of stuff, but I'll just give you a quick summary here. If in fact, Nvidia and AMD have sold three or 400,000 graphics cards to miners over the last six or eight months. And there's no reason to doubt that, by the way, um, based on their own numbers. Okay. Based on Nvidia saying they've sold at least a hundred million worth of cards to miners. Um, an interesting thing is about to happen because it's getting harder and harder to mine Ethereum properly with GPUs. Uh, at this point, uh, if you're running an older, say, like, like an RX 570 or 580, um, all the minor calculators I went through come back and say you're making a five, six dollars a day running them if you're lucky. Um, and if your investment in the card is, say, three hundred dollars to buy an RX 570, if you can find one at this point, and you're making five bucks a day, you have to run the card. What? 60 days to pay for the card, right? There is a point where the number of days you can run the card profitably because the difficulty keeps going up and you keep making less every day. It's like difficulty goes this way. So earnings go this way. There's a point where they're going to cross over and uh, I'm getting mail. Where am I getting mail from? I thought I turned mail off anyway. Um, there will be a crossover point where it will no longer be very profitable to, to mine Ethereum with, with lower end GPUs than middle range GPUs. Uh, and then like the 3060s, the 3070s, the 3080s, and finally the 3090s, it will get to that point. Ethereum is also trying to move away from mining because they realize it's a technical dead end, but we're going to end up in a situation where at some point in the near future, six months, probably eight months, there's going to be a lot more cards, used cards coming on the market as miners get out of Ethereum. It could happen as soon as the summer. My guess is closer to the fall or early winter. Uh, you'll start to see a ton of used cards on the market as people get out. I already saw one video on YouTube the other day. Uh, new in the last week, um, tech guy from Australia, whose name I can't remember, and my apologies. Um, he was looking for GPUs, and he found a guy selling a bunch of RX 570s, and sure enough, it was an old mining rig. And the guy was selling it because he wasn't making any money on it anymore. Uh, the cost of electricity in Australia, I guess, is a little bit higher, whatever. It just wasn't, he wasn't making enough money to make it worthwhile. He sold the cards because the cards are worth more to sell now than they are to run. Um so he got uh, 12 cards and a whole bunch of other stuff for, I don't know, 1800 bucks or something. It was cheap. And I suspect that's the way we're going. So anyway, I just wanted to say, by the way, thanks very much for watching uh, and the likes and the follows. And uh, hit the comments. Let me know what you think. Um, it's really important to get your feedback in these things because it really helps make these uh, videos way more interesting when I know kind of what you're thinking. So once again, thanks very much for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell Jay. Yeah, go over and post Jay and tell him some, some old man is beaning on him. He'll be like, what? <laughs> All right, catch you next time. Playing video games badly. <laughs>